What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon to a few out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. It's about 10.53 in the morning here in uh, California. Latest activity shows some movement over here around the Turkey area once again. 3.7 coming in. Also some activity kicking up throughout the Mediterranean area. As well as some movement off the coast of California. We'll get to that here in just a second. I do want to chat about a, uh, a very close asteroid uh, about ready to make a, well, a close approach here to this planet tomorrow. This is a newly discovered asteroid, 2023 BU. And uh, it's going to come super close, folks. Uh, roughly within uh, 2,174 miles of the surface of the Earth. That's pretty close. That's very close. And uh, there's a little model here. kind of shows you where it's going to be uh, shooting at or hovering nearby. Uh, notice down here is the uh, geocentric distance as it gets closest to Earth. You'll see that uh, kind of peak out. And it's right above the South America region here. Now this model is showing roughly a distance of about 99, well, 9,972 kilometers, which is further uh, than the estimate that I just gave you. So this is subject to change though. Uh, but as you can see here on the position of the, um, the graph, closest approach, uh, roughly right over South America area. Now the space weather folks have a, a little article here on it chatting about the um, newly discovered asteroid. It will happen uh, tomorrow, it looks like, about 4.17 Eastern Time. It is uh, 5 meters in width, which is uh, roughly about oh, 16, uh, 16 feet, so it's not a large asteroid whatsoever. But uh, yeah, it's about 16 feet 4 inches. Here they mention uh, going to be about 3,500 kilometers just above South America, well within the planet's belt of geosynchronous satellites. So there's a bunch of satellites up there too, right? We have a bunch. Uh, who knows? Lucky shot. Let's see if it can uh, fly by without hitting any of those satellites. It's been a while since I've seen zero lunar distances here uh, for for an asteroid closest approach that I've seen for um, in quite a while again it's not a big one even if it were to directly impact earth uh, a little five meter wide asteroid probably not going to do too much damage aside from uh, um, you know potential views up in the sky maybe it might be a little dramatic up there as it enters into the earth's atmos uh, atmosphere there currently is no risk of impact here on the Torino scale uh, but these might just be the dates ahead either way we'll watch it there's a pretty cool site to um, to watch it live uh, let's see here they have it listed up here live stream flyby from the virtual telescope EU Looks like about 25% of the geostationary satellite's distance. So anyway, um, you know, going to watch that and see how it uh, plays out. It'd be really cool to uh, check out. It looks like diameter here. There's an estimate. They, I just gave you guys an average. 3.7 to 8.2 meters. Pretty crazy. Here they mentioned again 3,500 kilometers uh, above the Earth's surface. So... We'll look for that, uh, you know, see if there's any updates to it uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. In the meantime, let's go ahead and check out earthquake activity here along the West Coast where things have been getting uh, somewhat active down here in Southern California area, just off the coast of uh, Los Angeles. I've seen a four-pointer shaking things up out here this morning. 4.2 off the coast of Malibu Beach. Now that was felt uh, pretty broadly inland uh, across Los, Los Angeles area, Long Beach, even in the portions down to San Diego, it looks like. Uh, no major shaking, just a little bit of 
uh, light shaking being reported there from the folks uh, that do report the earthquakes in when they fill them. Now, I believe it was off of the Malibu Fault. Let me see exactly where this was at. A couple different fault systems down here. We do have the, uh, the Malibu Fault that kind of runs up here and off the coast. But it's hard to tell. That's way up north. Specifically around this area, um, I'm not seeing any listed on the map. Just south here of this little fault system. But uh, even it doesn't even look like it's directly on that. So there's probably a probably an unknown fault out there that uh, still has yet to be discovered. Either way, 4.2 followed up by uh, looks like a few aftershocks here. Uh, the largest one at 3.6. This activity striking about 14 kilometers deep underneath the um, the oceanic crust out here. The latest one shows a 1.6. Uh, a little bit further south and down. Now, let's see if this has been reviewed. It's underneath automatic status, so we'll see if that gets updated. A look at historical data. It does show earthquake activity out here from time to time. Um, the key over here shows there's, well, fours and fives out here occasionally since about 1900. So no stranger to earthquakes out there in the Pacific Ocean just off the coast of L.A., but been a while since we've seen some movement i would say uh inland the rest of california here uh, shows some a little bit of activity on the elsinore fault and also the san jacinto fault zone uh, no major swarms but we'll continue to watch this and see how it plays out uh, with any uh, further uptick bay area up north relatively quiet today got one earthquake around the hayward fault at 1.3 nothing big up here in Northern California, of course, the, uh, that never fails. The uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Field out here, latest quake of 2.2, coming in uh, about 2.4 kilometers deep. And Northern California, I believe this was from yesterday, which it was, 2.7. Looks like things have kind of uh, mellowed out in the northern part of the state currently. Working its way down south far as the... Uh, the uptick in earthquake activity goes so we'll watch that and see how it plays out seattle uh looks like most of this activity from yesterday we did have a couple smaller quakes here around mount st helens some very small microquakes being reported all right uh inland even further into the north american plate some activity kicking up yesterday in texas nothing to report there today uh over here around the oklahoma area Got uh, a little bit of activity. It looks like around the uh, Meridian area, 1.7. Also a 3.5 out there in the mix. Out here in the, um, well, shall we look and see what's out there? I know there's uh, some nearby, it looks like Luther gas and oil fields. So I'm sure there's quite a bit out there. Um, let's see what we got specifically around this area. Looks like there's um, one right here. They kind of blend in when there's greenery out here. Not for sure what this is here, but uh, there's another one. So definitely uh, within the location of some uh, wastewater disposal wells, oil pumping operations out there. Those earthquakes are uh, striking in those areas. Puerto Rico zone. Puerto Rico looks like, um, well, we did have a 3.8 and a 2.2 within this area overnight. Most of this from yesterday. Not really seeing too much of a swarm currently. Remember our earthquake swarm down here? It's disappeared once again. It's come to a halt. Last time that happened, we had a six-pointer kick up over here around the subduction zone. So we'll watch that. South America, relatively quiet. We did have one 4.4. .4. Uh, up north, around the Peru area, 34 kilometers deep. A glance here at the EMSC model shows it relatively quiet here on the globe as well for that area. Over here around the Kermadec Trench, New Zealand area, things look like they're lighting up a little bit on the map, around the globe. Now specifically on the map, we did have a 5.0 into the Kermadec Trench, 37 kilometers deep, about 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, prior to that, some deeper activity up north with a uh, almost a 500 kilometer deep 4.4. Now there is some other activity being reported here, some smaller quakes 
and also a couple deeper fours it looks like into the area of the Kermadec Trench recent activity uh, not showing up on the USGS map but it is on the GeoNet servers here uh, for the area of the Kermadec Trench so increasing activity as noted in that region throughout the uh, Papua New Guinea Solomon Islands area uh, let's see we did have one earthquake up here in China 5.3 just a couple hours ago uh, prior to that most of the activity confined to the area around the Maluka Sea some forest kicking off continuing continuing uh, following that uh, large earthquake there a few days ago this activity off the coast of Japan relatively uh, older activity from yesterday nothing new being reported today on the map uh, let's see what we got for the globe or the globe not a whole lot going on there across the Kuril Kamchaka Trench further west we do have a 3.5 coming in to the area see exactly where that's at uh, I believe that's around the Turkey area okay eastern Mediterranean region that one coming in the latest uh, earthquake there on the map now the USGS uh, I don't believe they're showing too much activity over here uh, in the area there's some movement up here just south of Turkey 5.9 coming in about four o'clock this morning and uh, some further activity westward yesterday well, let's see what we have here for the EMSC model far as uh, further earthquake activity goes here on the flat scale model yeah there's that five pointer 5.9 some other smaller quakes and there's some threes some twos in there as well it looks like a couple twos but uh, definitely a pretty good uptick I would say across the area uh, overnight still waiting um, there's there's that 5.1 coming up here just into the uh, I believe that was the China area right let me double check and see just north of the Himalayas that's a 5.3 8 o'clock now that's kind of odd I wonder why uh, why it's shown a 5.1 here on the globe all right a little odd um, either way definitely some activity kicking up there uh, we're still waiting for some movement here within the seismic gap zone though uh, roughly about where that 5.1 is eastward and down south here to about the northern end of the Java Trench uh, we did have some activity really ramping up here uh, a couple days ago it came to a halt right about here uh, and then it came to a halt right about here at the southern end of the Java Trench so things are a little on the suspect side around this region for some uh, larger brewing or brewing some larger activity I should say uh, that's a definite region to watch pretty closely Big Island Hawaii lighting up with a whole bunch of microquakes it looks like today see what we got uh, brewing out there in the middle of the Pacific getting that swarm of activity in a linear type fashion off the southeastern coast working its way kind of towards the Lohi Sea Mount but not specifically uh, most of this activity though relatively deep 35 36 kilometers but it has been uh, been noticing this little migration of earthquakes out there one earthquake off here on the west 2.0 about 4.7 kilometers deep Yeah, California lighting up like crazy. So that looks like they adjusted that little oddball earthquake that was off here. Um, a little bit closer to the region of the swarm. 16 kilometers deep out there. Something, something brewing. All right. Space weather activity aside from that near-Earth asteroid tomorrow. Did have an inflare kickoff. Told you folks, whenever, whenever these sunspots face away from Earth, they decide to get active. Uh, when they're directly facing Earth, they behave quite nicely. Just a little odd. So we had a little moderate M flare kickoff here about an M. Oh, M 4.6 and also another M 1.3 coming in here within the last hour. Um, I believe that uh, Earth's or that flare came from that massive sunspot region. Remember 3190, the huge sunspot that was sitting down on the southern portion of the uh, sun it was here facing us for quite a few days well there's 3190 now most recent image way out of view 
once it's out of view, it wants to start popping off some good sized flares. Didn't I, didn't I mention that? A couple updates back. So we're left with um, not a whole lot going on up here. A couple measly uh, sunspot regions that really harbor nothing uh, except for a little bit of uh, magnetic structure. But then again, that's, you know, it's very low probability of seeing any flares from that region, those regions up here. Uh, let's see here. No major solar weather events expected currently. Uh, so therefore, the three-day looks calm. The Aurora forecast up there for the folks. No, Don't really have any good news for you guys. I'm not expecting any major events. All right, folks. I will be posting up the um, link to this near-Earth asteroid tomorrow, 2023 BU. Again, it's uh, it's going to come pretty close. Looks like the Earth is uh, going to slingshot it a little bit with the gravitational pull. But I've always thought if, if it comes within a you know a, a very close distance like that, that we could have it pull into Earth. But uh, it might just be right at that exact location where it's just going to miss us, and then use the uh, gravitational pull from the Earth to kind of slingshot away from it either way something to watch and uh, there is going to be a live stream on it again i will provide that in this update video have a good wednesday got to get back to uh, a whole bunch of school stuff yay and uh keep at it have a good one we'll catch you guys a little bit later on tonight take care everyone